everyone. Hello. Hi. Hi. You know this gentleman, I assume? Yes. Hi. Hello. Hi. I'm Harvey. Lacey. Hey, Lacey. No, uh, most of us are freshmen. I think not all of us. Brian. Yeah. So you're all freshmen. John. John. Brian. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, glad you could come and we can talk about what happened last semester and any questions that you have for, for me. Uh, and uh, the, one of the questions that uh, Congressman Reed asked me was that, that he had heard that there were 11 arrests at the, at the event that occurred in the spine. And one of the students told me there were 11 arrests. Well, just so we clear. So first of all, I appreciate Harvey, you taking the time to, to meet with us and to meet with the, the students here. And um, as we had an initial conversation, there were some open questions that I still have in regards to uh, the status of what happened at the end of the year and what uh, uh, we're going into the new year with. And, I, and again, I'll reiterate uh, in front of these students, um, as an elected official representing the 23rd Congressional District, and to see a gentleman like Art Laffer uh, handled the way that he was handled in uh, um, that whole situation, you know, I had to personally call him and apologize on behalf of uh, uh, the folks we represent. And to have an economist of that statue just uh, to be caught up into this was uh, uh, very disappointing uh, to me to see one of our campuses of New York State. I wrote it as well. And, and I will just tell you, he's a gentleman. Um, he's not an activist. He's not a politician. He is an economist, as he will tell you. And one of the things that I hope will come out of this at the end of the day is maybe we can be part of knowing art now, knowing having a relationship with them, maybe a way to rekindle that event, to do it in a way that maybe we can uh, learn uh, from that event, how it went down, how it was organized, how it was set up, and uh, make sure that if there is any uh, protest, counter protest, that it's done in a civil way, so that the message he was there to deliver, to get delivered, and we can have an exchange. So hopefully we get your commitment uh, to that in, in regards to uh, potentially down the way. Um, but I also wanted to come and stand with these college Republicans in particular uh, because of the tabling situation as well as the Laffer event. And we just had a great event, in my opinion, up on the, up on the spine uh, with the table, with uh, uh, activities, spreading the word of free speech, handing out constitutions, having conversations with your students that are not affiliated mm -hmm. uh, with any of the groups involved here. And I think the general sense was you can do this in a civil way, you can have the dialogue, and uh, so long as you respect each other. And uh, one of the things that we uh, uh, are always sensitive to is um, when these dis the civil discourse de-escalates or escalates into uh, physical confrontation, threats of violence, um, uh, perceived or otherwise, um, that we stand with the folks that are in that situation. And these are individuals, in my opinion, that experience something that uh, hopefully we learn from, but also they shouldn't have had, had to experience that in a way that uh, uh, I, I understand uh, getting a permit uh, from the Student Association in regards to tabling. I, I understand the time, place, uh, reasonable restrictions on free speech. I totally understand all that. But, you know, when you have a situation like this, there's a lot of, clearly to me, some uh, unanswered questions, mm -hmm. you know, as to what is the status of you know, these guys have been penalized. Uh, they've had their rights uh, to assemble, uh, revoked uh, by the Student Association. They've lost their financial commitment, is my understanding. 
from their perspective, it's unclear whether or not that's perpetual or if that's a certain time limit when it... Uh, one semester? One semester. My understanding was it was one semester. Is that your understanding, yeah. uh, Mr. President? Yeah. I, was, I wasn't clear on that. One semester being until the end of this yeah, semester? Yeah, and again, I, we don't have the student association itself. Yet, right, so, right, I, you know, so I'm simply stating here, when, when I asked them for more information, I was advised that it was a one semester penalty. Okay. So that would be yeah. this semester? Correct. And again, that's my understanding. Okay. Yeah. So maybe we, you need confirmation of that, I would assume? Yeah, yeah, I, I, was, I was never told. As the president of college Republicans, I, sure. I had no idea. What we understand there's a transition. You have yeah. a former yeah, president yeah. Yeah. that may have more information. Yes. I just want to make sure. And, and your understanding is revocation of the reservation uh, rights and financial loss. Yes. Okay. Is there any other penalties you're aware of? That I'm not aware of any else. All right, so if we can get that uh, cleared up, that would be very helpful. The status of the progressive uh, group, um, I asked that inquiry. I, I know the university um, obviously works through the student or with the student association, but they're the ones that are uh, looking at that investigation. And do you have any update for us? Yeah, I mean, I'm meeting with them. I don't remember if it's uh, later this week or next week to catch up on a few different things. But prior to the end of the last semester, I did, you know, provide them information um, that you know we believe the Progressive Association encouraged students here at the university to violate our policies, and that they would need to respond to that as well if, if in fact. Uh, you know, having responded the way they responded to the college Republican issue with respect to the reservation process. So that is my expectation. Okay. So we're talking about a week or two, and then we get some closure on uh, where they stand. I would hope so, yes. Uh, well, um, obviously, we want to stay in close contact uh, with the university and as well as the student association. Who's the president of the student association? A uh, woman by the name of Emma Ross. Okay. Can you make sure we reach out to her and send her a letter? Uh, want to keep an eye on it, what the, what the status of that investigation is. And, disciplinary action there because I don't I would hope there's some consequence uh, to that violation and if there's not obviously I'm going to be very concerned about that um, and, and, well, and, and yeah, I appreciate that uh, because um, you know, that's something we're really sensitive to. but the other thing I wanted to express to you Harvey is you know the perception or the information I received today that you know, these students did not feel as if the university understood their perception of threat them that they experience, and so I don't know if I can so be a conduit what, of this conversation. What, what I wanted to, to uh, talk to you a little bit about was how we responded that day with the university police. Um, the, the table event had certainly got out of control, and and the, the noise level I could hear from my office the noise level got to the point where because we didn't expect something to be happening, we responded very quickly. There was a call to the University Police from the Student Union Office. Student University Police came and stood kind of facing different directions to separate you folks from the students that were, were protesting and, and, and being incivil, certainly incivil. Uh, and at that point, I think that we had protected the students that were on both sides at that point. Um, and, and they, I think I saw you in the video, talking to one of the policemen. And so the police were there and having conversations with people, but they didn't get there in the beginning. They didn't get there until they, they heard that something was happening. And one of the reasons why you want to know about reservations or who the speaker is or what the, the topic might be, so we can be prepared. Uh, when we have, we have actually policies on campus that if you expect to have a counter protest because of the content of something that's happening, let us know so that we can prepare, be prepared. So we were prepared for, for Mr. Lockery, Dr. Lockery's visit. Uh, we had police in the off in, in the room. We had police outside, undercover, uh, plain clothes as well as in uniform. Uh, as soon as that student stood up on the chair with a bullhorn, police took action against him to arrest him, to arrest the student next to him. We turned to uh, Mr. Laffer and said, how long will you wait for us to clear the room? He said to our police officer, 10 minutes. He then left. He didn't, after, Professor Lauper said, I will wait 10 minutes. He didn't give us more than a minute to clear the room. But we had enough police there to make as many arrests as necessary in order to have that talk go off. And that was the commitment. That morning on the phone, I spoke with everybody that was going to be there, and I said, we're making arrests until we get that room clear. He didn't give us a chance, unfortunately. And I don't blame him. You know, if you feel threatened and you don't want to stay, you, you can leave. But, elderly man. But, but, there, yeah. but there was a back door that he could have gone in the back room, 
sat there for a little while, wait for us to clear the room and bring, bring him back in. So we, we tried. We really did try. But, but if I may, uh, I, watched, I watched the full video of what, was, what went down in that room. And I, by the end of it, I, I didn't see any police officers there, but I did see the protesters still there, still screaming at the people who were waiting for him to come back. Well, so I, I, the room was filled with police. They weren't in uniform. But I, I believe, I believe in the video, there weren't arrests being made. They, the seats were empty, but the protesters were filling in the aisles, walking up to the front. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any police the video, officers there. The video showed one police officer grabbing the student who's on the chair, lifting yes. him up, picking him down, and carrying him outside the room. Yeah. Another student who tried to stop that police officer from doing it, he got grabbed, taken out of the room. It was going to be a process. It was going to be one at a time. It was even with 10 or 15 police. It takes two police to make an arrest. And mm -hmm. you're going to arrest 100 people. It's going to take you uh, a little bit of time in order to do that. Yeah, no, no, that, I saw that part, but eventually it just looked like a, a room full of protesters. It, I didn't. And that's when that is after. Right. Professor Walker. Right. Yeah. So okay. So, gone, so after he left, it right. was dismissed. Okay. And and we wish we had we had a chance. We wish we could have a do over. I think we just like this was a do over out there. Yeah. You, you had uh, an unsanctioned tabling event out there today. <laughs> yes. And uh, I went on record. You can arrest me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with that. Whatever fine. And, and, and so, and, and it was civil. And the yeah. students who stopped by didn't it, it, um, attack it in any way. They had some conversations, I guess. Um, and that's what the way we would hope it is. And if we have a do over with Locker, I think the same thing would happen. I think whatever happened those two days in November is, is an aberration of being at the university. If you're all freshmen, that's not the way things happen here. I think we have a very broad perspective on view. Our faculty are committed to these concepts. Uh, and in fact, they wrote a resolution right at the end of the semester really reinforcing their commitment. Did you, did you feel that as students have experienced this uh, lap around tabling uh, situation? Did you feel the university's response was inclusive of your input as to how you uh, received that day? No, not really. And why was it? Well, it's because I wasn't, I wasn't given anything from the university. It was, it was just the, the public statements that were given to everyone. That's really all I heard. It wasn't, there wasn't a personal reaching out. Um, from my understanding, there were like safe space events afterwards for the protesters. And that's, that's my understanding. I'm obviously not blaming you for that, but, um, I, I wasn't, the, the, I, the club as, as a whole wasn't really given anything post event. Probably, probably could have done something. Could have yeah, I mean, I, you know, again, we're happy to sit down with you and, mm -hmm. and as in the same way we would with any other uh, group of students, whether they are formally organized as an association right. or not. I mean, we went <clears throat> through a variety of different channels to try to provide a, a good and strong learning environment for all of our students, yourselves included. No, no issue, you know, argument. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, happy to sit down with you. Uh, I'm not aware of any um, uh, organized, you know, safe space events for protesters, but, um, you know, uh, certainly nobody in, in the organizations I'm responsible for took that step. But, you know, I, I, I don't know if something happened anyway that, you know, may have been organized. To and, and sort of just so you know, there were 13 policemen out there today. Yeah. Right <laughs> A lot more than it usually gets, I can yeah, promise. And an ambulance. Or we should have passed out again. We were hoping well, 13 was a lucky <laughs> number today. <you> know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad we didn't need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that, uh, you know, that, I appreciate the proactive. So sometimes you need that, but uh, my, my whole goal in these. Uh, uh, exchanges to avoid that, as yeah. your, your goal is. Yeah. You want to be prepared. But you got to be prepared of uh, for these escalations as they occur. So, because um, one of the other, you know, so following the tabling event and the students, uh, the Palestinian student organization I brought to the attention yeah. of the university, you know, maybe to clear some air here, because I think there's a lot of, what I find in these situations often is there's a lot of misinformation, there's a lot of relying on the internet, because if it's on the internet, it must be true. So we want to, I think, Hopefully this is an opportunity for you folks to have an exchange with the head of the uh, university in a very candid way, to, to tell the tell Harvey how you felt, uh, I think is important, but also for Harvey to express the university's concern for both organizations, both sides of the equation, and, and where we go from here. And so the student uh, Palestinian group that was uh, in the library, it was 
there was no sanctions to that? Uh, what this was fall. And when did that occur? Or what, what we know, this was last spring. So, yeah. I don't Oh, this is the this is the one where they tore the post. I guess it may have yeah, been a year and a half ago. Yeah. So yeah. so SJP and and again I'd have to go back and look at all the information. So uh, I'm not sure I'm being on yeah, right. accurate just, just to be upfront. The I believe they were um, you know uh, chartered if that's the right word by the graduate student organization, but not by the SA. Okay. Um, so in that way, they had student status. It was conferred through the GSO rather than through the SA, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. But I do remember some, you know, back and forth around uh, a student um, who tore a, uh, um, a, a like there was a you know piece of cardboard with some message on the front of a table that was part of the display in the tombs area of the library, if I'm recalling yeah. yeah. and, and, and it was um, there was a video of it that you can watch, and just the student came up and yelled at them for the content because they were it was a. Israeli uh, land ownership, um, and and the student got angry and picked up the poster and tore it down, and then ran away. And they got that on video. They came back a little bit later and apologized. They actually did. So we, we do have record of that. Um, it was there was no the tabling was not a observable problem. The tabling area in the library is observable through the multi-color MRC, yeah. So I don't know if I had never heard that there was a reservation violation. Well, I think that, I did know that, that there was problems. If I may, I think what the concern is, or what I took from my perception of the information was, if that organization was uh, organizing and presenting information by way of a table mm -hmm. in the library, and if they didn't reserve the appropriate uh, I space. I think they did. Okay, I and that's why I think yes, this, I think this may can, be misinformation. Yes, I mean, we can if, follow up on So that. if they yeah. did it properly. It was a, um, it was a, it was a Video that went pretty viral, but I do not remember any violation of table. What we'll look into that. You know, because I think the concern is, is if they were uh, not sanctioned, uh, they, they as a Palestinian. This was this was one of our club members, and, and to be fair, all of us are freshmen. We we we're not here for that. It might not be. He's not cold. present right now. But that yeah. perception, yeah. that okay. if we can nullify that perception that one organization uh, who didn't maybe follow the rules in regards to the library area. Um, wasn't sanctioned, but college Republicans were sanctioned. Obviously, I would hope you could appreciate that college Republicans may feel uh, uncertain sure, 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 in yeah. regards to yeah, that. So, if it, yeah, and if we clarify that so that that myth doesn't perpetuate yeah. itself going forward. I think that and the other helpful. one that I'm concerned with is in our office, you said that one of the students said there were 11 arrests that occurred in the table. That's what I want to get to this. Because my understanding, you're, you, you filed a police uh, uh, report, mm -hmm. um, and that is being hands of the university, but you, you don't know the closure or where that's Right now, at. um, no, right now I have a charge against somebody, but I'm not really sure as to where it's going right now. Um, they're the collapsing charges so, though, but. That's criminal charges in the town of Vestal Court. Yeah, it's in the town of Vestal, so it's not for the university. And you got a hearing? Um, not yet. Yeah, that, 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 it would be a, a violation, so there would be, you know, it would be an appearance taken to leave. Um, All right, so. So technically, we use the term arrest. I mean, it's being handled in the criminal court process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, were there any other arrests on that day that you were aware of? Because no. I thought I heard um, that there were nine other arrests. Uh, Those from the Art Laffer, right? Not the one. From from what I know, the the arrests were made at the Art Laffer event. Yeah, I don't think okay. anything was made from um, the table on the Thursday. Other than your complaint to. Uh, yeah. Other besides like my claims, I think John. Uh, that, well. So that was a misperception on my perspective. It was from the Laffer. Okay, mm -hmm. where the arrest. The big things. arrest last fall was in the city of Binghamton at the Columbus State Parade. Did we any of these? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Like yeah. And there may have been some at the county ex uh, county meeting about the uh, yes. first responder law. Right. Yeah. right. yeah. So mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot more activism in, in our community than on campus. Sure. Lot of times. And, sure. And sometimes yeah. these events get mixed up. With so maybe to to express to the president um, to Harvey. Um, how, how did you, you obviously filed a criminal complaint um, against this individual yeah. for harassment? Mm -hmm. I mean, how did that make you feel? It was concerning because obviously I was, I was just getting screamed at. It was also just a matter of getting shoved and whatnot at, on the Thursday because I had like multiple physical confrontations with people where I was getting shoved at one second and 
Because I was also like ripped off my hat, threw it around. So just taking my personal property as well was a concern. All right, I've read the police report. I'm just going to skip the police report as well. Uh, there is not uh, in the police report that you were physically. Uh, mm -hmm. There was the hat being taken off the yeah. phone, but there is not a, in the report that you were physically touched or pushed. Yeah, I was shoved out. And I didn't but you did not put that in the police report that we had. Okay. So you guys have, I don't? You, you mm -hmm. gave the interview to the police. Yeah. And I have that report. Did I not like I was shoved in there? Okay, regardless yeah. if you regardless if you if you send it or not in yeah. a police report. Um, I mean I have video evidence. Okay. Yeah. You have video evidence yeah. of it. You have a student here who expresses that she's been physically contacted. And we agree her hat was removed by an individual. Yeah. Which requires physical contact. Right. I, it doesn't totally agree. If it's my jacket or my hat, you're still physically contacted. Did you consent to that physical contact? No, because I was just I was trying to get out of there because obviously the cops wanted us to leave. So I was just trying to get my backpack and a guy was just like standing there just kind of like trying to avoid me from getting it. So in response, he like ripped off my hat. And it was a bad scene. It was yeah. ugly. If I were you, I would have been frightened that any one of those students that were on the other side of the police could do something very dangerous to you. Um, our police were there standing between you to try to make sure that you were protected as much as we possibly could. The language that those students use will haunt them the rest of their lives on, on the video. Um, it's unacceptable. I, I know that the person that was actually on the video was the student that you charged in, in court, yeah. and she is not accepted uh, the plea that they've been giving her. They gave her an ECD and, and her attorney turned it down. They want to fight it, and so it's going to continue in the court. And, and I wish you the best of luck to, to find that that it did happen and that that person is brought to justice because I think her behavior that day was really made things at the university look horrible, just horrible. Mm -hmm. uh, received over 300 emails in the next 24 hours from people across the country that were complaining about it, and I, and I agree with them. Mm -hmm. um, so good luck with that, and, and continue to, to pursue that. I know it's going through a, a, a not a not an arrest process, but a, a criminal charge, a court charge, I should say, a court summons, uh, and that's a process that, that isn't as easy because you don't have police on your side for, for evidence. So Harvey, actually you raise a, an interesting point for me. So you have a student who you're aware of is going through uh, a criminal process uh, that happened on your university property. And has there been any outreach from the university to her um, in regards to her perception of how she feels on the university property now, given that that happened here? What, what has been the university's outreach to her uh, to, to, as you rightfully declared, it was frightening, it was unacceptable behavior, mm -hmm. it is behavior by an individual that sounds like you know that individual uh, that we're referring to. He's on the video. Yeah, and so. His name's Aaron. Aaron, and so Aaron's actions towards one of your students clearly has had some impact on her. Mm -hmm. What has the university done to address her concerns? Uh, we have a care team. Uh, I don't think the care team has reached out to you yet. Uh, it's a group of social workers and psychologists and that work uh, on campus uh, full time, about a dozen of them, and uh, usually we have students who come forward with their concerns, but we also have some outreach. If you talk to your RA, perhaps you can yeah, I mean, we, we have a variety of ways in which if, if you, in fact, would like some support, uh, and, you know, uh, uh, candidly, given the scale at which we operate, um, usually students make some initial outreach to somebody, and then it gets referred. Well, whoever they're comfortable with, it might be a faculty member. Well, it here, might be yeah, a, obviously, I have yeah. someone, one of your students coming and, and from so, law enforcement that's motivated 300 emails within 24 hours to the office of the president. So, and so I, I, I can't say that she stood silent right. um, during that period. Would you like somebody from the care team to reach out to you? Well, I think it's just, I don't know if that's what I want it. I think it would have been nice, though, just to have somebody just to say something after the math, because, I mean, obviously you have to say that you weren't aware that there was some um, safe spaces for, that were organized ultimately for the protesters afterwards, but I felt like just speaking on behalf of all of us, I think we could say that we just didn't feel like there was outreach towards us, and it was an extremely frightening event, obviously, just watching the video. I think for us it would have been nice to have the university um, back up. A little bit, so we know. I, I said, I, I, you know, again, I, I typically I'm not the one on the front lines of it, but uh, I know there's, there are um, plans through our debate coach to facilitate a, a debate. Uh, I think it's February 11th, if I, if I got the date correct. Mm -hmm. You know, and so that was a sort of a programmatic response to try to create an environment where 
students representing you know the different perspectives that are clashing in this context might have the opportunity to share with one another their perspectives in a mediated environment so that was a piece of our response at that point in time uh, we were hoping to perhaps get that in at the end of the semester but with the advent of both exams and, and everything else it just proved to be unrealistic we didn't want to host a, a lousy version of that event so that was one form of, of response um, the um, we've met with the Student Association and are working on, uh, have worked on a set of protest guidelines that we'll be working through with our shared governance groups so that we're, uh, you know, we, we added an experience that we hadn't um, uh, had to work through before the LAPR event. We want to be better about it um, next time and learn from things that we could improve upon. So Did you reach out to the college Republicans? And so we're process. in the middle of, of that process now and we'll, we'll work through our student government. I mean, that's the way we to do it. Did you encourage the student government to reach out to the college Republicans? To I'm meeting with the student speak? government to talk about how they want to manage mm -hmm. their interactions with both the progressives and the Republicans. And my expectation is that they'll approach that in an even-handed manner and in a manner that is but you've already had skills. conversations with the I had a first conversation, and we're, we have follow-up uh, conversations scheduled for the beginning of the semester. Yeah, I strongly encourage as we, yeah. Emma, I think you said her name was? Yeah. Um, and we'll weigh in with Emma herself. Sure. Um, but also, I strongly encourage the university to bring in this voice uh, in that, uh, given that they were involved in this situation to learn from. And maybe they could offer you a perspective, or the Student Government Association, a perspective that maybe they're not so willing to obviously hear. Um, given or how I perceive it. Yeah, I, mean, I think when, when we actually get to the point of, of having that dialogue, and that's not meant to suggest there'll, there'll be you know, delay, uh, I have not in my interactions with the uh, Student Government Association leadership um, found them to be unwilling to consider a variety of perspectives. That's, you know, uh, could I say that about every student government I've worked with in my 11 years here? No. Um, can I say that about this one? Yes, I think I can. Well, that's good to hear because uh, one of the things I'm going to be interested in talking to them is the, the sanctions that they imposed upon the college Republicans vis the other organizations. And when, when it had nothing to, you know, the other penalties, I want to know the, the time and severity. Uh, did they lose financial resources? Yeah. Did they lose the ability for a semester to uh, be taken off of their... Well, I, I, think it, I think that's a fair concern, and I share it, and I've already articulated to them that I share it, but I want to give them a chance to respond and also to see how they handle the progressives as well sure. before, I, uh, before I lean in a little bit more. Well, I, think, I think one of the learning lessons here, though, and what I did not hear, uh, was that the care team recognizing a student potentially in crisis, in need, and not to say you were in crisis, not to say you were in need. I saw you on the, on the podium at the... The turning point of that, you look pretty happy there. And, uh, and you had President Trump say our name to correctly, you pronounced it right. So that was great. Well, it's, it's amazing when you can have individuals like the President of the United States and the United States a member of the House of Representatives. I'm quite proud of how, up there. And, how, and I'm quite proud of her, um, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, and I'm quite proud of all these college Republicans uh, for going through this and to be a voice across the country as a place where uh, we can learn from this and, 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 and use this. So, you know, I applaud it, but when you have a student that is going through criminal proceedings and, and receiving that type of treatment from a fellow student, Aaron, that you know, that you are aware of. I found out about yesterday. Uh, uh, about the about criminal yesterday. proceedings yes. and, yes. and, as, and as, who Aaron as, is. And as I found out you about your visit. didn't know about Aaron. As I found that. out about your visit, I started to do some research on my staff. So this, this is very brand new. For me. Okay, okay. So obviously, um, maybe a learning uh, opportunity here for the university. I would suggest my humble suggestion is that when you have situations like that, I think it's very critical in the immediate time afterwards to send a message to both organizations, both sides of the equation, that hey, the university is here to protect everyone. And you may feel offended, i.e. progressive association in this uh, circumstance, but also college Republicans and people involved in the college Republicans may feel unsafe and threatened. And I think that's what, in my humble opinion, from what I heard talking to these individuals, is that what they were feeling was that the university wasn't being responsive to their needs. Take it for what it's worth, do nothing with it, do something with it, but I mean, that's what I heard from you folks up on the, sp up on the spine, and um, as a group of individuals, no, you can use our office in any way you want to in order to make sure that those concerns are raised. But I cut you off from saying something. 
um, person, correct me was if I'm wrong, but wasn't it one of the responses from the school that like we did it in response to the shooting that morning? That was that was the narrative that. Um, you were in your statement. Yeah, it wasn't in your okay. statement. That, I, that was that was just uh, the did school newspaper. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that that wouldn't be. And then yeah. there was multiple people in the SGA that were protesting, and they said multiple times that we'll never be allowed to be a club here. So like I feel like they have like a they definitely have like a personal vendetta. And how do we go about countering that? So just to I mean, uh, if, if it were to go down that path, uh, you know, and I've had the uh, the responsibility to intervene in one prior instance um, like this several years ago, and I would intervene. Uh, you know, the, um, we respect the student association's autonomy. I mean, they're a separately incorporated um, organization. Um, but we have a responsibility to ensure that the you know, constitutionally protected rights of all of our students uh, are, in fact, protected. Uh, and we can't tolerate action by the student association, which ultimately receives their dollars through the state process. So years ago, um, it was actually a conservatively led student organization government that um, uh, sought to marginalize the uh, New Jersey, New Jersey, New York, PERG, NY, PERG, uh, and did so in ways that were, you know, beyond um, appropriate. And so we had to intervene. Uh, we would intervene in precisely the same way if um, the scale uh, or nature of their response um, was unfair or, or, you know, ultimately violated your rights as, uh, as students to organize uh, and consistent with all the regular rules regulations of the university and the SA. Okay? Just to be mm -hmm. very direct about that. And so as we go through that process, is this something where there's dialogue between the president here of the College of Republicans, SGA, and your office? Well, I think or? we're talking about turning point. Is that the student? Yeah. yeah. Not talking okay, about I'm sorry. Okay. That specifically was turning point. recognized. Yeah. Yeah. Turning point is not recognized. Right. I haven't gone through the process yet, but I don't see why you would not be able to go through We have a lot of it. Yeah, they just like told us that they weren't allowed. No, it's not. It's right. not really the process of telling you they're not going to let you do okay. There's there's okay. forms you have to fill out. There's training you have to go through. And there's a membership that you have to run. You have to do a general information meeting, and it takes at least a semester to go through the approval process. But no, I, I would encourage you to do that. Uh, that's good to know. So I appreciate that question. I forgot to get the turning point guy. College president. College president. <laughs> Okay. Oh, wait. So one question. I, I see a lot of phones on the table. And I even see one with battery backup. So I, I'm going to guess that somebody might be recording this conversation. That's the nature of the beast. And, um, <laughs> so just as a point of that, again, I'm, I'm um, kind of I think you should yeah. disclose that up front. We would have certainly had the exact same conversation, but etiquette would really expect that you would tell and us. And it appears. Well, I'm not recording. And if it appears it's 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 it'll be disappointing. Yep. I just want to say that because it looked a lot. Yep. Well, as a public official, where uh, everything is, uh, you know, off the record and no one says anything in Washington <laughs> D.C. that uh, gets out to the public and, and, and is tracked 24/7 by political operatives, uh, both in my house and, and in my uh, private uh, uh, arrangement in public life. Um, I appreciate that concern. And if you could share that as you uh, teach the next generation of folks coming into this business, yep. that etiquette would go a long way. But Having experienced a, a different form of etiquette that seems yeah. to be coming up, um, you know, I, I'm not recording anything. All I'm here, all I'm here to do, Harvey, is listen. You, in my humble opinion, what I saw was appalling. What I saw is not the America I fought. You know that my father fought for. What I saw uh, was an extremism overtaking uh, our campuses um, that needs to be stood up to, and I applaud these students for standing up to us. And I have committed to, uh, to stand with these students and others across the nation to make sure that on our watch, the, 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 the tolerance that I am preached at across the district and across the nation that I'm supposed to uh, accept, and then all of a sudden I go in with a counter message into these forms. And even I am, as I shared with you, spat upon, sworn at by four-year-olds on the shoulders of fathers that are raising their children this way. Uh, that we do everything in our power to make sure as uh, elected officials and leaders of these institutions to make sure that that just as I